Today is a very sad day for uh, everyone who uh, worked in the uh, news business uh, way back when and uh, even now because uh, the man I'm going to talk about for the next couple of minutes uh, left a legacy beyond belief. His name was uh, Pete Noyce. Pete died last night at the age of 90 after a brief illness. He didn't have COVID. Uh, his heart just gave out on him. Uh, Pete uh, is a genius of a man, was a genius of a man. He's a legend in his time. Uh, many of you uh, who are not in the news business uh, probably never heard of Pete Noyce. So uh, you wonder how could a guy make such an impact if he wasn't on camera and wasn't a big bona fide star. Pete Noyce was a superstar behind the scenes. Pete was a producer, a writer, a news director, a news executive. He produced specials. He broke the story on the uh, Charlie Manson case way back in 1969. He broke numerous stories. Uh, there was one very famous one that's on TV right now, uh, The Dale Car. That's his story. They're making a movie out of it. And Pete was uh, going to be a consultant on that. In fact, he got his first check and was thrilled to death about it uh, just about two months ago. Uh, Pete began his career in Los Angeles right after he served in uh, the Army, uh, right after the Korean War. Uh, Pete interviewed Dwight D. Eisenhower when he worked for the Stars and Stripes. Uh, Pete interviewed presidents. Uh, beyond that, uh, Pete did it all, and Pete knew everyone. Pete was my mentor. Without Pete Noyes, there would have been no Dave Lopez television reporter for all those years. Pete taught me just about everything I know in this business. He hired me in San Diego in 1976 after I, uh, in a fit of peak, uh, quit my job at Channel 9, decided I'd had enough of uh, what was going on there, uh, OKHJ Channel 9. And uh, I didn't have a job. I had uh, a newborn baby and my wife was expecting our second child. And someone told me, you know, uh, Pete Noyes knows about you. He's, he's seen your work on Channel 9. I was doing sports and also news at the same time. And so I called him up. And this was 1976, August of 1976. And Pete, in his gruff voice, says, yeah, I'll give you a shot, but I'm not going to have you do sports. I go, OK, fine. I'm going to make a newsman out of you. I'm going to make an honest journalist out of you, is the way he put it. And he did. Pete taught me so much. Pete taught me the value of uh, getting it right, not so much getting it first, but getting it right. He taught me the value of being aggressive and not being obnoxious taught me the value of being polite, stern, and he taught me the value of standing up for what you believed in. Uh, Pete was remarkable. Uh, we stayed friends all these years. Uh, he became a producer at Channel 2 in his later days of his career, and he uh, produced the special that I did when I uh, was uh, stricken with prostate cancer in 1996. Uh, he did a marvelous job on that story. There are so many people in this business today that owe their careers to Pete Noyce simply because he knew talent when he saw it, he gave people the opportunity, and he taught us well. Phil Schumann is one, John Schwatt is another, God, I can go on and on, Harold Green, uh, old time old, uh, old uh, anchor man, and on and on and on, and many people behind the scenes. Pete could be gruff, he could be tough, but boy was he good, and boy was he loyal to you. And man, did he know his stuff. I have never in my career, and again, I've been doing this since 1964, I've seen a lot of people, I've met a lot of great men and women in this business. Pete Noyes was the giant. There was something special about Pete. He knew how to get a point across, he knew how to get a story across, but Pete was a wonderful human being. He was tough, he had his edges, he liked to drink, he liked to say things that sometimes he shouldn't have said. But that's Pete, he spoke his mind all the way to the end. I used to love to have conversations with him. In the last part of his life, I spoke to him once a week. We'd go have breakfast with him, we'd see him, told stories, sometimes we repeated him a lot, but you know, that's okay, he was 90 years old. Wonderful, wonderful man. Wrote two marvelous books, uh, one about the big news and one about the real LA Confidential. You can both get, get them both on Amazon. It's great reads. I'm sad today. My heart aches. But I also know that Pete did not want to continue on the way he was. It was hard for him to walk. His wife was extremely ill with Alzheimer's. And uh, Pete was tired. His heart gave out, but not his spirit. 
when I worked in San Diego, the, uh, he brought a lot of guys from Los Angeles up to work with him at KFMB in San Diego. And uh, we were known as Pete's Boys. Sometimes it would be said sarcastically because, you know, they were very, very territorial in San Diego and they didn't like the idea of all these L.A. guys coming up working for Pete, Pete's Boys. I was a Pete boy, proud of it. You know what? I'm still a Pete boy. I love you, Pete. I love you like a father. I'll miss you. And I thank you for everything you did for not only me, but for so many other journalists in this town. L.A. is much better off journalistically for having you grace our lives. There'll never be another one like you. God bless you.